Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Lee Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another edition of the show. And um, so more underground cellar wines. Now these wines are both from Malm Cellars, M-A-L-M, Malm Cellars. And um, very hard to get much information about this guy, okay, um, as far as the cellar. This is uh, one of those operations where um, uh, I think someone said typical of uh, uh, the Sonoma area, Oh, I, I, anyway, that um, it's like the wine is actually produced in kind of like a warehouse district. Okay, kind of in a, hard to find in in a hard to find winery. Um, so in other words, he doesn't. You know, he's not some picturesque house on a flowing hills of vineyards and blah blah blah. Okay, hey, reality is it doesn't matter where you grow it. You know, you can produce wine in your garage if you want. Oh, they do that in France, garage wines. Anyway, um, sorry. So let's talk about Mom Cellars real quick here. Um, I'm going to read a couple of the things here. Um, I found two places that actually talked about it. The first place I found was from the Pinophile website. All right. Uh, Brendan Mom grew up, that's the guy who owns it, uh, grew up close to where I live, so the guy who, I guess, runs Pinophile, in Orange County, California, and left at an early age to Sonoma to learn winemaking. Uh, he's a one-man show. Not only makes the wines, but also works the vineyards, designs the labels. So even though the vineyards aren't like where the winery is, he, he probably helps farm it. Or maybe he owns the vineyards, or maybe he contracts, but he works it. Uh, designs the labels and delivers the wine to his accounts in his diesel pickup truck. This is pure seat-of-the-pants Sonoma winemaking. He crafts both a regular and reserved Sonoma Coast Pinot Noir, hence the Pinot file. Um, Note, the label is a, a peculiar robin's egg blue, but a retailer told me it really stands out on the shelf and attracts women's, women buyer, and, sorry, and attracts women buyers like flies. Maybe I should wear a robin's egg blue. Uh, the wines are sold through retail outlets. Um, now, from the underground seller offer, a boutique Sonoma County winery located, located in Heldsburg, Mom Cellar is literally a one-man show. Kind of sounds like the Pinot file right up a little bit. Uh, being an ex-Sonoma State University soccer player turned winemaker. Um, let's see. His career started after entering the first barrel of wine in the prestigious Orange County Fair wine competition. His cross blend, which we're going to hit here in a little bit, uh, took gold over much more prestigious, producer, prestigious producers and raised many eyebrows among judges. 13 years later, uh, he produces a Chardonnay, a Sauvignon Blanc, and Zinfandel, Syrah, and Cabernet, and does everything involved in the process himself, from harvesting grapes to delivering them to, to delivering them to accounts by his by hand in his pickup truck. Oh, they didn't put diesel in there. I thought they did. Uh, not widely distributed. Not, not, not widely distributed. Uh, he's been featured at the likes of the Beverly Hills Hotel, Trump National Golf Club, Mastro's Steakhouse in Newport Beach and Beverly Hills, and a prominent and a few prominent Las Vegas restaurants. Uh, he lives in Sonoma County, has a wife named Amanda, two kids, uh, blah, blah, blah. All right, so that's about as much as I can find out about this place, other than a Yelp, a Yelp entry, which has quite a few really good reviews, but there's a couple of people that were upset because they apparently bought some futures, and at the time they wrote the review, uh, those wines have not been delivered, and you know these were some pretty expensive futures that they bought. So um, as of today's date, which is July 17th, I don't know if that's been resolved, but I can just tell you that it seemed like there were some issues for at least with the two people um, about buying wines. But everybody else who's had the wines or visited the winery. Uh, have had rave reviews about it. Even the people that complained about not getting their wine, they've had the wine, so it wasn't like they just bought it sight unseen. 
um, or never had wines, prior vintage wines. Um, and when you go to the website, it says account is suspended. So not really sure if there's something going on there. He has a Facebook page. I don't, I'm not a fan of Facebook pages. I mean, I get it. I mean, okay, I'm not a fan of as a Facebook page as your web page. You should have a web page because Facebook doesn't allow you to do a lot of things, whereas a web page you have free reign pretty much. Um, doesn't mean you shouldn't have a presence on Facebook. Uh, I believe in that. All right, so um, so that's the deal with Mom Seller. So we're going to get here into uh, the Zin. Now, the Zin is a 2012. It's from the Dry Creek Valley. Now, um, Dry Creek Valley is kind of considered, oh, here's a little close-up of the label, uh, kind of considered the place or one of the places in California to grow Zinfandel. Um, and as we all should know at this point, if you've been watching the show for a while, Zinfandel, you know, is one of my uh, favorite grapes, uh, favorite wines. And um, I don't drink enough of it, trust me, because I'm always looking for other wines. But when I see a good deal on Zin, I'm going to do it. Now, this was part of a deal where um, you pay $28 at Underground Cellar for, you know, you ordered however many, however many wines you want, and you got minimum, which was this one, which is 28 bucks. Um, I actually got, uh, I think I got two bottles of this and then one bottle of the other one. And now that I'm looking, I think the, Bar yeah, the Barbaresco ended up with two bottles of that, and I, I can't remember if that offer was for less, uh, and I got two bottles of that. Anyway, or maybe I paid 40 bucks, I don't know. Um, no, cause I looked at the offer and, and there was, there was like uh, a lower priced wine as part of the offer. So, um, uh, so it's $28 retail or at least through the winery, uh, well, underground cellar and very likely the winery, uh, if you visit there, they don't really have an online presence to order online. And, uh, Zimmendale is kind of one of those California grapes. I mean, it's not native to California though. Some people will tell you it is, um, it is a cousin uh, or an extremely like close twin of, uh, of, um, I can't believe I can't remember the name of the stupid grape in Italy, um, is a cousin of, you know, I'll tell you that in a second. You're probably all shouting. It's this, it's this. We're going to get into the wine. Primitivo. Uh, let's see which is also a cousin or clone or twin to, I can't remember the Croatian grape, which is, I think, the actual parent of all these, but they're all basically the same grape. It's like, you know, a Pinot Green or Pinot Grigio, kind of, not really. Because it really acts exactly, never mind, I'm getting to the wine. All right, so um, darker red fruits, color, I mean, good red deep color, actually purplish, kind of purple, yeah, extracted. Now, I can't remember what the alcohol was. I don't think it was too, no, 15.4, okay, which is typical, really, for Zinn. But it feels like I'm smelling alcohol. Um, and I don't mean this in I'm not rubbing alcohol. Like it's not like a smell alcohol, but I can smell the alcohol in it. Almost a bit of, almost a bit of VA, volatile acidity. Volatile acidity. And really, you know, when I first had the smell, I got all the fruit flavors. Now I'm not getting anything. So let's try to intensify it. So I get some spiciness out of it, um, almost a little bit of bark or wood, twig, bramble even. Yeah, see that word every once in a while and had to look that up. I was like, bramble, what the heck, the heck is bramble? Oh, yeah, brush, okay, twigs, wood. Okay, so again, maybe a little bit of caramel. Really, I would say just darker red fruits. I know, very generic. 
which means I'm right. Because <laughs> I didn't get specific, right? I would probably guess raspberry. Yeah. I wouldn't really go so far as blackberry. A little hot, a little minty, a little bit of chocolate, actually, like milk chocolate. Um, I feel the fleshiness of fruit, so the tannins are, are hitting me, but not really high, high tannins. I'd probably call them medium tannin, nothing, nothing too exceptional on the tannin. Um, medium plus in the acidity, for sure. Lots of mouth-watering going on. But the acidity is very contained, so it's not that not like that white wine acidity that just like you notice everything is coated. It feels it feels like you know a little bit of chocolate and caramel coating on um, and actually, you know, I, I talked about the apple peel reference. I think really that's a sensation that I've felt in a lot of wines in the past. Um, and I really do feel like there's this apple peel on tannins. And I'm going to just float out. There's tannins on apples. Right? I think I'm right. I think I mentioned that in the cider review. So, but you have that, that apple peel type of uh, sensation. And not that I taste apples. Just the... Apple peel sensation. Um, yeah, really kind of very minty um, with a little bit of chocolate. Um, even maybe a bit of cherry, but definitely raspberry. Um, I don't get on the palate a huge explosion of spices um, that I would go to, or, or black pepper, or you know that type of peppers or spices that I would typically expect from a Zin. But pretty good. Twenty-eight dollars, good. Hey, you know this is a small, small operation. He's got, she's got to charge enough money to make money. So it's not like he's, you know, producing, you know, fifty thousand cases of the thing and he can sell it for fifteen dollars. But you know, it's it's good. It's good and tasty. Um, like I said, twenty-eight bucks might be a little steep for me, uh, as far as, as far as that it's it's going to be just outstanding of a wine. Um, if if at the winery it's less money, maybe it's closer to twenty dollars. Then yeah, um, absolutely twenty dollars. And I hate you know I feel I feel like so I feel like I'm just so judgmental. Like well, it's worth twenty dollars, but not twenty-eight. Like, what do I know about this guy and his winery operations? I don't know. I don't know how much it costs him to make this bottle of wine, how much he's got to profit off of it. So I don't want to, I don't want to sit there and make it sound like I just know better. I know all. And, you know, I, 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 that my opinion is, is law that it shouldn't be worth $28. You might think it should be worth 50 bucks for all I know. Um, I'm just saying that it's not, and it's for 28, it's not like way out of the realm of possibility, but if I had a twenty dollars in and this bottle, I'd probably go for the twenty dollars in, because to me they're they're pretty close in 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 um, level or not quality but level. It's good though. I mean, I can see the twenty to thirty dollar range easily in this. If you had it for fifteen, it, I'd be like, wow, you, you got to steal. But good wine. Um, if you find it, check it out. Let's put it that way. Okay? You got the ducats. Then uh, I like the word ducats, by the way. If you haven't figured that out by now. All right, so we are going to move on to wine number two. All right, so now wine number two. So again, from Mom Cellars. Now, this wine is the 10th anniversary uh, cross blend. Now, it does not have a vintage on it, so we're going to call it non-vintage. But it's the 10th anniversary of it, so don't know if the if the blend is a blend also of vintages and not just grapes. 
but since it probably doesn't have the minimum percentage of grapes for a vintage, he can't call it, he can't give it a vintage. Or he may just decide he doesn't want to. Who knows? It's up to them. Just because the law allows it doesn't mean you have to do it. He could, you know, this says, uh, on the back it just says red wine. As a matter of fact, it doesn't even have an appellation on it. It doesn't say California, doesn't say American, doesn't say anything. That doesn't mean anything. It, it, this, this still could be Dry Creek. Well, it's in Dry Creek. But it still could be California or it could be Sonoma. We just didn't put it on there for whatever reason it is. Maybe, the, maybe be how we had the label initially set up, uh, the TTB didn't approve it. They have to approve. By the way, TTB has to approve every single label. For almost every vintage. I mean, if you make a change, you have to get it resubmitted. If you're just changing the vintage, you don't have to. But if you make any changes on the label, they have to approve it. So think about how many wineries are in the United States. Pretty daunting task. Okay, so uh, let's see here. From the offer from Underground Cellars. Now, this was, uh, again, I paid $28 for this. It retails for $40, according to Underground Cellar. Um, the mom sellers cross blend was the wine label was the wine that started it all for Brendan and what took a gold at the orange County fair wine competition from the very first barrel he ever produced, uh, named after a close family friend, uh, it's equal parts of Zin, Petit Syrah, Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot. This is a special bottling of the cross blend and the bottle sports a commemorative 10th anniversary label to celebrate its 10th incarnation. And they only produce 160 cases. So again, small producer, small production. So let's check it out. Wine number four is a red wine. Blah, 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 blah. Um, not as purpley, really, really pretty much just like red. Not purple like the other one. They're standing on the glass, but that could be from the other wines too. All right, we're not going to go through the whole grid here. Kind of chocolatey, kind of chocolate covered cherries. I don't smell the alcohol as much. Though there's a little bit. Now he has to have the alcohol on here. 14.7. Okay, now that's a legal requirement on the label. You ever notice that beer labels don't always have the alcohol requirement? I thought it was required. I'm sorry, that beer labels don't always have the alcohol listed. Thought it was a requirement. Apparently it's not. So, yeah, cocoa, cherries, a little bit of wood, bramble, if you will. A little bit of peppery spiciness to it. Maybe this is from the Zinfandel. That's probably from the Cab. Or the Merlot. Or the Petit Verdot. Who knows? Did I cover all the blend? Did I cover all the grapes? Oh, Petit Syrah, not, but not, not, uh, not for dough. It's a nice aroma to it. And nothing's overpowering. It's not like a fruit bomb. You know, there's a bit of fruitness to it. There's a little bit of minerality to it. A little bit of spice to it. I don't really get any floral, but it's not this overwhelming, overpowering nose. So if you're looking for that, not here. You know, I want to say this is kind of European in, in, in um, not, I want to say flavor, but in, in style almost, almost. I want to say old world necessarily because this is, feels like maybe a European producer that's producing in a newer style. I 
but I definitely get a few things happening. I almost said a lot of things, but really just a few things happening. There's definitely a spiciness to it. Um, I can kind of feel the alcohol a little bit, a little bit more than the Zin uh, on the palate. Um, not too much of a fleshiness, high acidity, medium plus to high acidity. Tannins are almost medium, yeah, medium, medium plus maybe. Um, not as much fleshiness to it, a little bit of fleshiness to it. Um, I got a bit of cocoa, I got a little bit of the red fruits, but they were very fleeting. Not too much green pepper, or but I get like more spiciness to it. Spice, spices, um, maybe the black or white, maybe black, I don't want to say white pepper, like black pepper. Um, it's got um, kind of some cherry, a little bit of chocolate, not a whole lot. Now I'm gonna drink, pour another here because sometimes the second pour really reveals a lot more. Mm. There's this quality to it that, um, <clears throat> characteristic, probably a better description, like a prickliness to it. Um, not acidity prickliness, but there's something about it that I, I can't really describe. It's almost like a, a bit of dustiness to it. Um, I hate to say it, but it made me feel like, maybe remind me of like a a trailer, <laughs> okay, like like a travel trailer back from childhood. So it's, it's weird how these aromas and flavors make you think of things. So it's really kind of generic. It's kind of hard for me to explain it. So since you don't have the reference, I'm not gonna harp on that. But um, the fruit's coming out a little bit more. It's more of a, more brighter red fruit. Um, so not a dark cherry, but a regular cherry, um, maybe raspberry to it. Um, I get a bit of mintiness to it still. Um, some of that spiciness, but, but the fruit flavors have come to the forefront a little bit more on the second pour. It's decent. I like it better than the Zen. Um, it, it drinks pretty much what I've had from other $40 bottles of wine. Um, if you can find it for 30, I think it's a better deal. Um, it's, it's got a lot of things going for it. It doesn't have any of the pyrazine, so none of the green bell pepper that you could expect from Cabernet Sauvignon and possibly Merlot. They both can exhibit it. So you don't get this typical California Cabernet Sauvignon thing to it. Um, <clears throat> says it's equal parts of all of it, of one, two, three, of four, of four grapes. So 25% of everything. Um, it's a good wine. I almost want to say I got a little tobacco out of it too. I'm going to pour just a little bit more. This is a wine I really want to spend just a little bit more time on. Oops, don't want to screw that up. Yeah, raspberries, more raspberry than anything else. Um, a little bit of mintiness, a little, not super hot, but I can feel the alcohol a little bit. I don't know, I mean, I've had, I've had wines that were less expensive and more expensive than this, and they taste, they, they've tasted like this. So I can't really tell you whether 40 bucks is a fair price or not. Um, again, <clears throat> it's whatever it costs him to make and uh, I'm not gonna say it's, a bad, it's not a bad wine. It's a good wine, it's well made for the most part. I mean, I don't think it's unbalanced really. Um, it's a little hot, a little heavy, I mean, as far as the alcohol, but that can be related to some of the grapes there with the Zinfandel especially. 
So um, I don't know. If you find it, if you're at the winery, definitely try it. Um, if you like it, buy it. I say, if you feel it's a good value at 40 bucks, then buy it. I'm not, I'm not like 100% like gung ho on it. Um, however, I don't think it's a bad wine in, in any stretch of the imagination. I don't think it's a bad wine. I just think maybe 40 bucks might be out of my price range for it. I'd be more comfortable paying at least $10 less for it. Um, but if you told me it was $50 bottle of wine or $60 bottle of wine, I wouldn't, I wouldn't question it. You know what I mean? Okay. So um, that's going to do it for today's episode. As always, uh, check out the links below about everything here. Well, there's really not much about mom, so I don't really, I'll probably have a link to Underground Cellar. There's not much else. I'm not going to put the links to the other stuff. You can search that out if you want. Um, maybe to the, well, the Pinot Report, I read the entire thing, so it's not even the Pinot file. Not any reason to, to link that. But I'll link to Underground Cellar. You can check out their deals. Uh, check them out. I really like what they do there. Uh, friend me up in the links above. Hit the donate button over there so I can buy more wine. And um, subscribe to iTunes because I'm back on there. And uh, we'll see everyone again next time.